So, so long as we ensure that total in is equal to total out, we express that as a constraint for an intermediate node like three, then we are done. Okay, so let's let's just imagine that they are all directed arcs like this. Okay, now remember a node like three here uh, is neither a source nor a destination. So it doesn't have a capacity nor does it have a demand number associated with it. Um, in other words, there can be a lot of entities coming to three only to go out of three or go out of this intermediate node eventually or within the planning time period, right? So the idea is uh, this will be in number one, in number two, in number three, out number four, out number five, out number six, right? So what we want to say is one plus two plus three must be equal to four plus five plus six. Yeah, total in, total count of uh, in inwards delivery is equal to total out of outwards delivery. Now remember that these variables are only are binary. So so um, coming in is either zero or one. Uh, link number two is also zero or one. Link number three is also zero or one. Right. So remember also that there is only one copy of you being delivered around the cities, as the optimization model goes. So basically, it is kind of mutually exclusive. Uh, if we actually trace through the, the calculations in that uh, when, when, when the optimal solution sent you into this intermediate node via 1, 2 and 3 will automatically be 0 because in reality you cannot exist simultaneously on all 2 or 3 roads. Right? So same thing, when you go out from the intermediate node, uh, only one of the 4, 5 and 6 will be set to 1. And the other links that go out from, from the intermediate node will automatically be zero. Right? However, the, the main thing is we upfront don't know which link comes in and which link goes out. And we just like to express this um, in equals to out condition and enforce it on the intermediate node, which we call constraint. Right? Constrain it on it so that um, the solution finder, like Excel's solver, will not abuse it by sending two, three copies of you into it and never send you out, making this intermediate node a final destination node, which is not, not going to be a, a feasible solution for the original problem. Now let's practice this total in equals to total out principle on an intermediate node like this, okay, on three. And I'm going to just clear the, the screen here a little bit just to make the link clearer all right so what is what should we what constraint should we write for a node like three and remember that any links that touch the begin node must be only coming out from the begin node any links that touch the end node must only go towards the end node and never come back out from the end node so the total in count of links coming into three will certainly be, can one go to three? Yes, so x, one, three, right? Plus, uh, can five, if we were at five, can we be sent to three? Sure, why not? Possible, right? Doesn't mean we have to, but possible. If we were at node four, can we be sent to three? Answer is yes, it's bi-directional. So x, four, three. And if we were at node six, will we be sent to three? Answer is no because when we are at six, we are done. We shouldn't, uh, you know, induce the, the solver or the model to come back out again. Now we need to add up all possibilities, all counts of going out from three, right? So if we, we are already at three, can we go from three to one? Answer is no. We came out from one. We never ever want to even entertain the possibility of going back into one. Can we go from three to five? Sure. That's certainly a possibility. And notice that x53 is a different variable from x35, right? Then can we go from three to four? Answer is, yeah, why not? And finally, can we go from three to six? Sure, if so, then we are done. But upfront, we don't know, okay? So that would be uh, the constraint that we are looking for that expresses the total in equals to total out principle for three, all right, 
uh, this particular intermediate node called 3. Okay, so, and then that's it. So what we need to do is we write out the template for transshipment node. All right, constraint the, the factory capacity to 1 because we are sending out one copy of ourselves. Right, just think of one as a factory that manufactures one copy of ourselves. Or think of us as presenting ourselves in city one. So there is one copy of ourselves. And no matter which link we go out, so summation of all the counts on the links, it has to be equal to one. It's not less than equal to one. Less than equal to will make us, because you're minimizing the cost of traveling. So answer will be don't go out from one, right? So that's or no solution because destination is demanding one copy of you. So the first set of constraints end up being the one constraint because there's only one factory manufacturing man, manufacturing one copy of you. And the set of all customers end up being one customer uh, because there's only one designated destination point. And that point requires one copy of you. All right, so this one and the one, uh, they are set to hard-coded as one because of the nature of shortest route problem. Then, of course, this summation of all links coming into the destination point uh, must add up to exactly one. Finally, for each transshipment node, the in-between in nodes like 3, 4, 2, and 5, each node will have a total in equals to total out constraint. So this will be a set of uh, constraints, as many constraints as there are number of intermediate nodes. And the way we do it, uh, if, if it is confusing to look at the xij and all that, outs in, outs out, is basically to just look at an example like this that I've done for you for node 3 and understand what's going on there and then apply that principle to other nodes like 2, 4 and 5. Right, it's very simple in idea. Uh, although when you write it out as a when you generalize it to correctly express that uh, that understanding, it would become a bit abstract like this. But the actual principle is very simple. Now also a bit on the decision variable, the x i j will be multiplied by c i j. The c i j will be the costs, and that's very easy to understand in real life. Uh, you take a, an aeroplane from city 1 to city 2, if that costs $80, that will be the CIJ, right? Uh, or if it takes 80 minutes to travel from city 1 to city 2 by car, then that will be the cost. And XIJ is, should I go from 1 to 2 as part of the shortest route? right? So set it to 1 if it is, 0 otherwise. So with all these uh, template and constraints set in motion, Next time, when, whenever we recognize a shortest route problem, we would just copy and paste this and then edit and customize uh, from here so that we will save a lot of time trying to think through again how to deal with transshipment problem, uh, nodes, and so on and so forth. All right, so uh, just, just keep in mind that. And one more thing is about the, the uh, general applicability of shortest route. Clearly, it is useful in uh, in, in logistics, in actual transportation settings, where we have a network of cities, we have many choices to take aeroplanes, right? Or we have a network of, the, uh, of, of uh, locations, we have uh, many, many choices to take buses, right? And there are many, many bus stops that we can uh, alight and change bus and, you know, interconnect our journeys with different buses. And uh, we like to find a way to, to go from place one to place six with the least amount of time. You know? So that is very, very clear cut how, our, how and when we should apply shortest route uh, linear programming model. But there are also other areas uh, that are less, uh, less, 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 how should we put it? Less uh, identifiable, let's put it that way, right? Uh, say in electrical engineering, when we lay circuits, and these nodes are actually where circuits or, or uh, wirings meet to allow electricity to be distributed, certainly uh, we also like to lay the wirings in a way that will take the least amount of copper so that we will 
the, the, the manufacturing of that circuit board would be cheaper. So that would involve shortest path as well to go from one point to another. Uh, and of course, in, um, in other applications such as finding the most straightforward route for water to flow from one point to another uh, amidst various tubings, right? That is also another application, shortest route problem. And there are many, many more so long as we can phrase it into note and arc settings. And so long as we can identify a common set of costs and we would really like the total cost to be minimized, then that is a prime uh, application example, right? So that will be a, 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 a very, very good ap application of shortest route problem. In the next section, we'll look at an uh, example of how we can use this and apply this uh, shortest route model to solve a traveling uh, example problem. And then we'll use Excel to actually solve it and see how we can. Now, there's a little bit of tricks involved and we should be uh, able to learn from the next video how we can implement shortest route in Excel.